National Library Week, which is why we have all these books with us. Kasama natin ang author, ang ating Phil Ann, si Carlene, Sobrino, Bonavere. We did an excerpt reading of Autobiography of a Stranger, and we just can't get enough. Please <laughs> share with us one more reading. Okay. Now, this one's a little different setting. This is not Bunker Hill anymore. It's not the 40s. It's much later in the Himalayas. And I'm trekking in the Himalayas with a Swiss fellow named Fritz. All right. OK. And I'm buying a rug, Tibetan rug. Fritz and I followed the girl over to the rug. And just as she reached up to get it, her father came out yelling something at her. He stopped in front of us. She glanced over at me for a second. Then I saw a look of helplessness and great disappointment upon her face. She hesitated for only a moment. Then she reached into her pocket and took out the money I'd just given her. She held it out to me. I didn't take it at first. Then the father stepped between us, whipped the money out of her hand, and threw it at me. He yelled in English that he was a proud man and that he didn't need our money. We should leave and not have the rug for any price. Then he said the words that made me understand what was happening. She is a woman, only that. She not trade or buy or sell. She not make joke like a man also. He scooped up the rug and stormed off. The girl stood, not crying. She said, please. And then she said, we are sorry. It's all right, I said, very sorry. She took a ring from one of her fingers and handed it to me. Please, madam, she said. And then she closed my hand over the ring with hers, pressed gently, and then moved quickly into the house. I glanced at the ring and started to move toward the house after the girl, but Fritz said, no, Teresa, you will cause trouble for the girl. And I knew he was right. I went quickly over to my pack and found the silk ribbons. Just as quickly, I tied them to the loom that she weaved the rug in. The image of the girl tying up her hair brought tears close, but I was too angry at the man to cry. Suddenly, I was fuming. I put my pack on in a second, and I was on my way down, practically running down the trail before Fritz could ask me about the ribbons or say anything at all. I didn't want to hear any words. When he caught up to me and started to say something, I interrupted with a tirade against the girl's father. Fritz told me later he had never heard such a mixture of very long words with very bad ones in any language. I stayed angry for a long time and continued my fast pace down the trail for nearly an hour. I'd have gone on at that rate, too, if it hadn't been for the sudden change in the terrain. A steep cliff rose up out of the flat clay we'd been walking on so abruptly that I stopped dead in my tracks, wondering how we could continue. I didn't see a way at first. I moved forward and caught sight of an overhang, light coming through a portion of the rock. Then I saw the trail. It went straight into the side of the cliff it had been carved out of, scooped from the looks of it by a giant ice cream scooper. Stairs, too, had been hewn into the bottom part of the scoop. They went up quickly and disappeared around a sharp bend. I turned back and looked at Fritz, who was sitting on a small boulder watching me. Fritz, I don't think I could go up there. No? No. Look at the river. I pointed to it. It's full of rocks. It's very fast, very cold. If I slip or hit the top of my pack on the overhang, I'll fall. Yeah. We were both quiet. Then I remembered the donkey caravan. And I said, how do the donkeys do it? How do they fit? They fit. It is big enough for them. It is big enough for us. And you, aren't you too tall? Maybe. I will bend my knees if I must. We're going up that trail, aren't we? Fritz smiled and nodded. And then he got up and walked toward the cliff. With him ahead of me, we started up the rock stairs. The higher they rose, the narrower the gorge became. I only looked down once, and when I did, I felt my whole body gravitate out and down toward the river. The river was thundering 40 or 50 feet below. I quickly turned my eyes front Onto, the Fritz pack, onto Fritz's backpack and felt my body lurch up the wall of the cliffside. I stopped for a second, took a deep breath, and then continued on. The stairs evened off for a short stretch, and I felt my legs trembling. 
Suddenly my body wanted to stop, to lie down on the solid stone and not get up again. I surprised myself when instead of lying down, I started singing. It was a song I hadn't sung or even heard since I was a child, an Igorot song that my mother used to sing to me sometimes when I'd had a bad dream. I sang it to myself now, and she would pat the bottom of my feet and hold me. Bak bak tu, bak bak tu lambik, tu lambik, tu lambawi kan, bawi kan, bawi kala nai, kala nai, kala nafu nai, nafu nai, nafu nayagta, nayagta, nayakala au. The song gave me courage, so I didn't know what the words meant. I even felt some joy, and I sang it again, and I continued to sing it, roaring myself finally over the roar of the river below me. When we started to descend, I felt my spirit give way, relent, fall with each uncertain step, down again to the river trail. And I was sad about the girl, the weaver. I was sad about the rug. I wished I had handled it all better for her sake. I felt responsible somehow. The girl and I had made a good connection and I had broken it with my carelessness. Suddenly I was sad about all the connections broken, so delicate, so hard to find, so easy to lose, inexplicably found this time in the weavings of a young girl's hands. What of Jonathan? I'd felt a thread there with him connecting us almost magically. What could he have meant to me and now Fritz? How did he come into my life so quietly, unnoticed, and then become so dear? How will I break this connection? I would. I thought I would because I'd broken all the rest. Fritz was waiting for me when I rounded the final bend, and after that, he went ahead. It was a straight course down. He was at the bottom of the stairs, his pack already off. I stopped and took my pack off and threw it down toward him. He caught hold of it to soften its fall onto the sandbank. I descended easily now, knees bent and not shaking. My feet were sure. I was flying down the stairs, and I heard Fritz laugh and whistle and clap his hands. When I reached him, he picked me up, whirled me around, and said, I love you. I wanted to say, I love you back, but I wasn't sure that was the feeling inside me. It was relief. It was something to do with not being afraid. I'm glad, Fritz. I'm glad that you love me, glad that we're here together. It was all I could say. I hoped it was enough. Thank you very much, Carlene, for that reading of Autobiography of a Stranger. We'll be right back here on Combine today with details on how to get this copy.